On April 11, 1981, the lives of a young mother and her five children would never be the same. Living in Cabin 28, located at the Ketty Resort, not too far from Plumas County, California, was a young woman and single mother, 36-year-old Glenna Sue Sharp and her five children, John Sharp, Greg Sharp, Sheila Sharp, Tina Sharp, and Ricky Sharp. It had only been about a year ago that Sue Sharp made the decision to move her five children from Connecticut to Ketty, California, right after separating from her husband. She managed to support her children on food stamps and a $250 a month check given to her on behalf of her husband, who at the time served as a Navy vet. Resources weren't really available for Sue and her children, but she managed to move out west in the hopes of starting anew with them. Investigators believe that on the night of April 11, 1981, 14-year-old Sheila Sharp returned to her home in Cabin 28 from sleeping over the night before at the Seabolt residence, Cabin 27. Sheila discovers the bodies of her mother, Sue Sharp, 36, older brother, John Sharp, 15, and close family friend, Dana Wingate, aged 17. It's also speculated that younger sister Tina Sharp was forcefully kidnapped at the scene and taken elsewhere where she was later murdered. Tina's bones, including the cranium section of her skull, was ultimately found nearby in 1984, three years after the fact. At the time of the murders, it is known that Sue Sharp was home with her 12-year-old daughter Tina and her two sons five-year-old Greg and nine-year-old Ricky. Twelve-year-old Justin Eason had spent the night and was also one of the three living boys left inside of a second bedroom. Justin's home was a short distance away in cabin 26. At this time, Sheila runs screaming back to the neighboring cabin where she had spent the night, cabin 27. At around 8.05 a.m. the following morning, Sheriff's Dispatch receive a call from Jan Albin, who at the time was co-owner of the Jetty Resort. She reported a possibility of a homicide in Cabin 28. While the crime was reported, Jamie Seabolt, Sonita Seabolt, and Sheila Sharp helped all three boys out the side bedroom window of Cabin 28. Another Northern California crime made headlines for years. In 1981, four Plumas County residents were brutally murdered. That case has never been solved. In tonight's special assignment, John Iander says, now there is new life in that investigation. Life goes on pretty peacefully here in Quincy and the 4,800 residents like it just that way. But two decades ago, Plumas County was rocked by an horrific multiple murder. It happened down this road in the Feather River Canyon at the tiny resort of Ketty. Ketty was founded in 1910 along the railroad tracks. This fashionable hotel with a famous bar and restaurant were its centerpiece. Surrounding it were 33 cabins. Ketty was such a popular tourist stop, the Zephyr used to bring in guests from Sacramento, even as far as San Francisco. But in April of 1981, Ketty's idyllic reputation was bloodied. Most people do. Margaret Wirt has lived nearby for 35 years. She remembers the shock of her children. They said, Mom, you better close the doors. And I said, what happened? And he said, there was a murder in Ketty. And I said, Ketty? My photographer and I then rushed Chopper 13 to the scene and began putting together the details of a grisly crime. Murdered in this cabin were a young mother, Glenda Sue Sharp, her 15-year-old son, John, and a neighbor, 17-year-old Dana Wingate. I reported then that the investigators were horrified by the carnage in the cabin. Using a butcher and steak knife and a claw hammer, the assailant or assailants murdered the three. But there was more. Glenna's daughter, Tina, was also missing. Uh, she's a girl of 12 years of age with uh, shoulder-length hair. Um, it's dark blonde in color and she has light blue eyes we're trying to locate tina we believe that uh, she's an integral part of this and that she may be the clue that we're looking for 
At the time, many Kitty residents didn't seem very affected by the bloodshed. Did you move up here for the security? No, I just moved up here because I like it. You still like it? Oh, yeah. You know, I still have my original reporter's notes that I took on this story more than 20 years ago. I wrote down the cabin number as 28. Well, there it is. And it hasn't changed much. After the murder, this cabin was sealed up tight. People began to depart the resort. Decay moved in. And then the rumor started. There was a ghost in number 28. Those who opened the door were greeted with gruesome images and sounds that drove them away screaming. There were suggestions the cabin might be replaced by a memorial park, but that never happened. Well, in two decades, I've certainly changed, but here at Keddy, things have sort of stood still. Except there is one change. Josh Hancock is a documentary maker who convinced the families to cooperate to get their story on national TV. Hancock interviewed me for the documentary, then I him. I have hope that it will be solved one day. Uh, it's hard 22 years later to think that it would be, but um, it's happening. You know, we turn, on, we turn on the news all the time and we see crimes being solved today that uh, took place a long time ago. Relatives of the victims have also agreed now to come forward. After seeing other things on the news, you know, after even older than this, they've been solved, so I know this one can be solved. And we just have to stick to it and have somebody, you know, on our side do it. Three years after the bloodshed in this cabin, the body of kidnapped Tina Sharp was found near Oroville. From that evidence and what was collected in Keddy, investigators believe they can now make a DNA profile. Then perhaps they can match it with other criminals solving this long-running mystery. That would put a lot of Plumas County residents at ease. Deputy Hank Clement was the first to arrive on the scene. As he opens the front door to cabin 28, he notices the bodies laying on the green carpeted floor, John Sharp laying closest to the front door. His hands were bound with medical tape. John's friend Dana was found next with his badly damaged head laying on top of a sofa pillow. His ankles were tied together with electrical cord. Mother Sue Sharp was found not far from the living room couch. She was partially clothed and gagged with a blue bandana and her own undergarment. Authorities suspected foul play as Sue's body clearly showed signs of distress, possibly caused from a sexual assault. Defensive wounds on her hands would later be discovered. Blood was later found on the walls of Tina and Sheila Sharp's bedroom. Also on the living room walls and furniture. Blood was also found under Sue Sharp's feet and under the soles of one of the young boys, which suggested that they had stepped into the blood at some point while moving in a struggle. Blood had also been discovered on both bedroom doors and outside on the handrail of the steep back stairs where it was believed to have been the area in which Tina Sharp was taken away from her home. Back in 1981, leads weren't followed and important evidence regarding the case wasn't properly checked. In 2016, 37 years later, new evidence and new developments have been resurfacing. DNA collected from a white strip of medical tape that had been used to bind the victim's hands, ankles, and mouth has revealed new damning evidence. This tape was found on the floor near Sue Sharp's body. Detective Mike Gamberg says that the DNA found matches that of a known living suspect. It hadn't been until recently when he obtained much needed samples that helped Gamberg find a DNA match. So this is what we know so far. It is suspected that the hammer found in a nearby pond back in 2016 was just one of the weapons used for the murders, as well as a knife that had also been recovered at the scene. Investigators also believe that an 880 BB or pellet rifle was also used but was never recovered. A cassette tape with the man's voice instructing the local police on where to find Tina Sharp's remains near Feather Falls was also sent out to authorities. It is suspected that there were possibly more than six suspects involved in this case as stated by Plumas County Sheriff Greg Hagwood and Mike Gamberg. Investigators believe that the said suspects wore gloves. 
identifiable footprints were not recovered inside. Back then, there were two known suspects. Martin Marty Smart, the stepfather of Justin Eason, who was found to be one of the three boys to survive the quadruple murders, and his roommate, John Bo Bubid. Conspiracy or not, six possible suspects involved in covering up a crime scene of a family says a lot. Investigators are still unsure about the motive of the murders, but Greg Hagwood believes that it had something to do with the abduction of 12-year-old Tina Sharp. Another conspiracy following the case are the allegations of Sue Sharp possibly being romantically involved with Martin Marty Smart. At the time, it is known that Martin Marty Smart and his wife Marilyn Smart were having premarital problems due to Martin's possessive and abusive ways. Marilyn had confessed to authorities that her husband, Mr. Smart, had one day tried to run her children over with his car. He had also previously made threats to her with a knife in hand. Martin also allegedly tried to purchase guns and even threatened to blow up his father's house with a bomb. It is also said that Martin sold drugs straight from a drug house allegedly owned by the same people that ran the other cabin homes. It is also said that right before the Smarts arrived to their home in cabin 26, Martin Smart had lost his job as a chef in which led him to sell drugs off of another property nearby. There were also reports of Sue Sharp trying to convince Marilyn Smart to leave her, then husband, Mr. Smart. A man that allegedly lived in cabin 28 but moved a few weeks before the murders tells detectives Bradley and Krim that he recounts hearing Sue yelling and arguing with an unknown man. Could it have possibly been Martin Smart? The Seabolt family recounts seeing an unknown green van that had been parked at the scene on or around 9 p.m. On the night of April 10, 1981, others noticed a brown Datsun parked on the residence that same evening with a tire that looked like it was going flat. 12-year-old Justin Eason goes under hypnosis and confesses to seeing two male individuals in their late 20s to early 30s conversing with Sue Sharp. When the conversation suddenly gets violent and ultimately Justin sees one of the two men kidnap and take Tina Sharp out of her home as soon as she walks over to the living room. One of the men allegedly has long dark blonde hair, is clean shaven and stands at around 5'11 to 6 feet 2 inches long. The second suspect was believed to have a short black beard and black hair slicked back at around 5 feet 10 inches tall. Both men were said to be wearing sunglasses. Martin could have also grown suspicious of how close his wife had become with Sue Sharp. This was a cause for concern since Martin was said to have been romantically involved with Sue behind his wife's back. Martin's wife, Marilyn, had also confided in Sue Sharp in telling her how she should go about leaving her abusive husband, Martin Smart. John Bo Bubid is said to have been lying to the police about simple facts concerning his age, birthday, and background information. He's known to have been in the Air Force at some point, but is primarily known to police as a repeat offender, committing armed robberies and having served jail time for it. He is also allegedly connected to transporting and selling large amounts of drugs as he is known to have mob ties in Las Vegas. Martin Marty Smart allegedly confessed to the murders of all four victims in a written letter sent out to his wife Marilyn Smart on or around April 14, 1981, when she decided to leave him for good. He later denied the allegations of writing the letter to officials. This is why investigators today believe that there were more than two individuals involved. Make sure to check out Ketty28.com, a website committed entirely to the Ketty Cabin murder case run by Mike Gamberg. This is where you can exclusively find old and new information regarding the case. If you have any information regarding the Ketty Cabin murder case, please call the Ketty hotline at 283-6360. You can remain anonymous.